Praise the Lord. How's everybody this morning? Amen. Good to see you. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Y'all give a big shout out to Jesus. Amen. He's the reason we're here. How many of y'all know we got a good God? How many go that God's been good to you? Can you testify he's been good to me? Amen. Do you know that his heart and his thoughts for you are all good? God doesn't have any, any evil thoughts for you. Everything that was negative in your life was poured out on Jesus Christ. And he bore anything that was negative in your life. Hallelujah. And he's become the, the goodness of God to us. And we just want to celebrate that God's good today. I want you all to make each other welcome. If you see somebody you don't know, you better make sure, Trinity Church, that you let them know that you're glad to see them today. We know we've got some visitors here, and we're so glad that you're here, some friends and some family that have come out to see uh, my good friend and my one of my closest brothers on the planet is this friend. I want you to make him welcome this morning, uh, Brother Casey Martin, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. And uh, we're going to have a good time. Listen, we're going to jam out, and if y'all want to join us, that's fine. But we really don't care about y'all this morning. It's about us. No, I'm joking. But we, we're going to celebrate our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a new song we've not done. And, uh, and so, I mean, they're, I'm, I'm always dragging up the rear. These guys here are super talented, and I'm just trying to fake it till I make it. Amen. So we're going to praise the Lord because we know that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Do you believe that? Amen. Let's get this done. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Well, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. You are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Everybody now. Well, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. You are good. Everybody You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. Sing it out. You are good. 
Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Yes, it does. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. All the people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. For who you are. For who you are. Somebody give a shout out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, if that doesn't get your fire lit, your wood's wet. <laughs> Amen. Welcome, Trinity Church. We just want to say welcome this morning. You are a blessing. If you're visiting for the first time, um, we just want to say you are a wonderful blessing for us. Um, we, uh, we're a wonderful church. We're just, I, I just have to say, I'm, I love my church. Hallelujah. I love my church home. And there isn't any other place in the world that I'd rather be than right here. Amen. So I just have just a couple of announcements. Visitors, if you did get, uh, I hope that you got a welcome bag. And in that welcome bag, there is a card with, uh, that we would like to get a little bit of information and get a record of your visit. And you can uh, drop it off. We have a tithe box in the back. You can just drop it in the tithe box back there. We just want to uh, just have a, uh, a record of that. Um, all right, so if you guys were here last week, we had a camp fundraiser with a car wash and hot dogs, and we raised over $1,200 for that. Way to go, Trinity Church. Wow, I mean, that's just awesome. And, and, and guys, you know, we had... A, little bitty kids out there washing your cars and I was noticing <laughs> some of those cars that were washed were <laughs> kind of leaving the, the the roll a little bit dirtier than what they came in so I mean if you get got smears everywhere I'm sorry but <laughs> all right um just a couple of things uh, we have added to our website I don't know if you guys ever go check on the website and stuff but we have uh, added on there a tithing option as well as uh, giving to the camp fund. So if you wanted to give that way online, you can uh, you know, give your tithing offerings online through the website. So it's uh, trinitychurchpalestine.com. Um, There's also a tile that is on uh, the kiosk in the back. You can just hit that tile and put in the amount. Also, we're going to take a love offering this morning for... Brother Casey, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. There's also a love offering tile back there. If you want to, if you didn't bring any extra cash or a check, or you can just use your uh, your debit card or credit card to uh, to give this morning. If you want to do that at any time. Um, and also today we're going to be having baptisms at the end of the service, and it's also membership Sunday. So if you would like to be a part of this awesome, awesome family of God. I would encourage you to come, join. Uh, we'll have a call at the end of the service, and, and you guys can come up and, and be, a, be just be a part of our family. You are a part of our family. We just want an official part of our family. So I also want to give a shout-out to my daughter, Rain, and her new fiancé, John Michael. <laughs> they got engaged last night with a... A beautiful little ceremony that he cooked up. He did a good job. <laughs> uh, just a little pray for me. Y'all <laughs> notice I wasn't clapping. I'm still working on it. Amen. <laughs> We're going to be planning, planning a wedding soon. So um, just a little funny I, I was reading today. So this uh, pastor was talking about uh, sustaining from alcohol, and he said, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd take it and I'd throw it all in the river. And then with more intensity, he said, and if I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and I'd throw it in the river. And then he said, and if I had all the whiskey in the world, 
I would take it and I would throw it in the river. And then the worship pastor hesitantly stood up with a dread look on his face and he said, for the closing song, we'll be singing the hymn, Shall We Gather at the River? <laughs> <laughs> Going down the river. Ah, <laughs> uh, I tell you what, the the word of God says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. And so today, guys, let's have a merry heart, not because anything's going good, but because God's good this morning. Amen. Let's stand up. Our most gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to come and thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you are good. And, Lord, we just ask, Father, that as we prepare our hearts, Lord, that, that we can worship you, Lord, with yes, a merry Jesus. heart this morning because you are so good to yes, us. Yes, Lord. We ask, Lord, that, that you would just prepare our hearts for the word that we're going to receive today. We thank you, Father God, that we can gather in here together and we can lift up your name, freely lift up your name, and we thank you for that. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
God, you're good all the time. You don't waver, God, in your goodness, Lord. You don't waver, God. You're steadfast. The rock of ages, Jesus.
some prayers answered by him. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Yes, he does. Well, he answers prayer. He's so good to me. Can anybody say I love him this morning? favorite one and he 
He's coming again. <laughs> He's coming. right there where you're at the Holy Spirit of God is here and he loves you he wants to take over he don't want to just come in he wants to take over he wants to take control hallelujah and do things in your life you can't do for yourself to live the life of Christ in you that you can't live for yourself would you just receive the Holy Spirit the Bible tells me that any one of you fathers if you had a son that asked for bread would you give him a stone? If you asked for fish, would you, would you, Father, would you give him a serpent? Would you give him a snake? He said, if you mean evil men, you know how to get good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit? If you simply ask, I can't ask for you. It's got to be your prayer. It's got to say, Holy Spirit, I want you to come. Come abide in my house, in this house, in this temple. Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Just let him take over. Let him take control. Glory, 
of our King, the presence of our God and our King. presence. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Boy, praise the Lord. I was ready to preach. Now, whoo, it's good to have my dear friend and my brother with me today. We, we spent a lot of miles on, in it's what I call the, the, uh, the spirit met us in the back of the bus. We spent a lot of miles, thousands of miles in the back of a big Prevo, and many times he pulled out his piano and he just, he just played while we were going down the road. Man, we just just ca get caught up in the goodness of God. We weren't nobody, nobody special, no different than anybody else. I'll just tell you what, <laughs> you can be rolling down the road at 70 miles an hour and the Spirit of God can keep up. How many of y'all know that? How many of you know that He can meet you right where you're at? I don't care where you, the Bible says, David said, if I make my bed in Sheol, in the pit of hell, he said, there you are. He said, if I make my boat in the heaven of heavens, he said, there you are. There's just not a place where God is not. And the only difference is whether or not you're able by faith to acknowledge the fact that he promised everyone who believed, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. 
I will never abandon you. Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. It's just awesome to know that God's with us everywhere we go. Never going to abandon you. And I tell you what, when you go through some hard times, and sometimes everybody can experience that. This man right here has experienced it many times. And he'll be honest with you. And he, there's times when he didn't feel, he felt like it was abandoned by God. We've been there, amen. Felt like he wasn't around. Felt like he didn't care. But when we talk about and we sing that song, he's perfect in all his ways. You may not know what you're going through. You may not understand it. You may not even think you got the strength to bury yourself up under it. But I want to tell you what, God's got a perfect plan. It's absolutely perfect. He's not flawed like you and me. He don't make plans and then have to readjust. When God sets out on a plan, you can better believe it's the best plan for your life, for whatever you're going through. And if you just stay the course and keep praising Him, keep blessing His name, keep saying, God, you're good, I believe it. I believe God, you're good. I believe that you're God that works everything together for good to those who are the called according to not your purposes, His. Hallelujah. You got to get out of yourself. You got to get out of your own self. Quit living life for your own purposes. Start submitting to the purpose of God that He has for your life. Amen? Well, that's my message for today. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Casey here, and I know that you're going to receive a blessing today. He's got a word. Hallelujah. Would y'all make him welcome? My dear friend, KCL Martin. so good to be here. Um, and is it Palestine or Palestine? Palestine? Okay. I was like, man, I'm going to Palestine. I'm like, where? What? <laughs> what are you going there for? But it's, um, it's good to be here this morning. And David and I, we have been talking about this uh, probably in about 50 years this morning. And things just have quite lined up for me. I've been busy. be here with you all this morning and I am so incredibly grateful so give yourselves a hand um, there's so much I want to say I really don't even know where to start um, David is there, there's there's two people in my life um, that has been very um, very instrumental very impactful uh, life-changing life-altering um, in my life and I didn't think about it until I was just up there playing both of these gentlemen that have been very impactful in my life they're both living in Texas which is very interesting um, young man by the name of John Cookman and I may talk a little bit about him later um, in my testimony and the other guys this your your pastor David Doris um, you know it's interesting how he was saying <laughs> that we had some really great conversations in the back of the bus. You know, Rosa Parks' experience was one thing. <laughs> you know, sorry. <laughs> but my experience was I encountered God in a way that I just completely was not expecting um, to encounter God, to be enlightened, to be, um, uh, for God to just kind of really reveal himself but honestly speaking, it's kind of humorous, but really, it was in the back of the bus. David and I traveling down the road, and, and it was so unintentional, at least to us. You know, we get from, we finished performing, and, and we just kind of hung out back there, and next thing you know, man, it was just like this, this influx of enlightenment, of, of revelation, 
and it was very life, uh, very life changing for me with some of the things that I have encountered. And um, so we'll, we'll talk about that some, but man, it, it's, it's really good to be here. And I hadn't seen them in a while. Becky, had, we, five years, four years? Just crazy since they left from, from Nashville. And um, it's good to see, to be with my family, man, David and Becky and Boy, Rain, she really set me up yesterday. I thought I was just coming here to hang out, and next thing I know, she's marrying John Michael uh, Montgomery, and I <laughs> I'm like, what in the world, man? This is, this is so cool. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very careful when, when I come, you know, go somewhere, um, especially in a church setting. I, I try not to get to a point where my approach is to indoctrinate because I trust that it's, it's the person that God has put over this house, which is David, it's his job to really go into the whole indoctrination, indoctrination um, portion of, of speaking. But what I want to do today, I just want to just kind of share my testimony and um, hopefully um, in my story that you can find perhaps hope in your life because sometimes we as believers, we are under the impression, well, now that I believe in God and now that I go to church and I do all of the religious activities, pay my tithes and offering, somehow we feel as though we are exempt from the tragedies of life, some of the traumas of life. And I am here to remind you, not of something negative, but even though we are believers, even though we know that God is with us, life still happens. Now, my story goes a little bit like this. Born and raised in church. I mean, literally, born in church. Tuesday, every Thursday, every Friday, twice on Sundays, for years, that was my life. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like how David said, I had a, we, we had a major drug problem. We were drug the church all <laughs> the time. Oh my gosh, and, and, and I, I remember being on the church van and just thinking to myself, man, I want to be outside playing and this, that, and the other, but all my life, you know, I've been around church, been involved in ministry, and this particular Sunday morning, I'll just kind of dive right in for the sake of time, I was getting ready to go to church, and I was the minister of music, and um, I got a phone call. And I noticed that it was my son's mother. And, and there was these strange noises. I was like, Jerry, listen, I'm running late for church. I have to go. And she just paused. And there was these strange sounds. I'm like, what in the world? Jerry, I have to go. I'll talk to you later. And she mustered out, he's gone, he's gone. And I'm like, who, wh what, what do you, what do you, Jerry, I have to go. Casey, he's gone, he's gone. She was talking about our 10-year-old son. He had visited a friend over the weekend. Um, the friends, the parents had, they had moved into this log cabin and they were still clearing trees. And my son used to love to be over there when they were cutting trees down because he used to love to say timber well to make a long story short the tree landed the wrong way and it crushed my son to death but I'm hurrying and I'm rushing because I'm late for church well, wait a minute I'm, I'm helping to lead worship and grow the ministry and all of this stuff what do you mean he's gone? That can't happen to me. You, you, you're kidding me. This, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. These things don't happen to Christians. We pray for people that have needs, but not these kind of needs. So that happened in 99, and all of a sudden life became extremely real to me. This whole idea of showing up, this whole idea of participating in Christian activities, there's nothing wrong with that. But there will be some times in your life when you will face the Red Sea of your life 
And there is no Moses. There is no staff. There's no one that's going to open that sea. And you will be overtaken. There will be times when you will receive a phone call with strange sounds. And you will get the news that you get. Now, does that mean that, well, being a Christian, you, you're going to have a whole lot of dark stuff? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that as we live this life of what we call a Christian life, there are times in our walk with God, our adventure with God, with living life, that there will be things that we encounter. And when you begin to ask questions like, one of the most tormenting questions for me was, why? God, why? There are men that are in prison that has done all types of heinous crimes. One of them, why do they get to live? And my 10-year-old is no longer here. So in the course of that, God put certain people in your life to help you along the way, David Darst was one of those guys. I needed, I needed someone that was so unwavering when it came to this whole idea of God because my faith, I had no faith. At that point in my life, I was extremely bitter. I told God what he could do with himself. I told God, you know what? Just let me go to hell. At least I know that you won't be there with me. Just let me be anywhere that you're not. Ladies and gentlemen, I was devastated. I was hurt, and I'm not saying that that was a justification for it, but I was in that place in my life because I've been around ministry all my life. I've traveled with some of the, some of the folks that you see on television um, as far as the tele televangelists. I mean, I come from a very strong background of Christian ministry. And this just did not make sense. So I get through life the best I can, and I begin to feel the wind under my wings again. God heal, I'm fast forwarding through a whole lot. And this happened, the phone call that I received was on a Sunday morning about um, somewhere between 9.30 and 10. And this was in 99. 2017, Sunday morning, about the same time, and I kid you not, no stretch of the imagination. I got a call from my ex again on a Sunday around that same time. And at this point, I'm just like, wait a minute. This is too... Surely not. Hey, what's going on? No, no, no sound. Jerry. 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 And she sniffles. And I just took my phone and tossed it. But I didn't know what was going on. But it took me back to 99. This is just last year in March. Called her on the house line, called her back, and she's just sobbing. I'm like, uh, Jerry, what is going on? Casey, he's gone. No, nah. no way, no way. There is no way. No, no, no. I'm just hollering. No, no, no. This is wrong. No. Our 19-year-old was on his way home, fell asleep at the wheel, hit a tree, and the tree crushed him to death. All right, God, 
drive us up. You mean to tell me, not once, twice, both of my sons, my seed is gone. What am I supposed to do with this? And I'm still in my process. We never stop being in the process of living. We all have this sexual transmitted disease called life. But what I can tell you is this. In spite of what I have encountered in my life, what I can tell you is this. There is no shadow of a doubt in my mind that God is. In the midst of these tra tragedies of my life, I have encountered, I have discovered a realness of God that I don't think I would have ever had, had come into but somehow through these tragedies, God has intervened. I basically want to tell you this today. In spite of what you have gone through, in spite of what you're going through, God is. The only way that I know beyond any reason whatsoever beyond any effort, beyond any medication, beyond anything, I know that I am here and still able to function because God is. Amen. Sometimes, folks, you can live in this life and there is no concert of understanding. You're, sometimes it seems like life is a bunch of T's with no crossing an I with no dots, a boat with no sail, no engine, no motor, and you just feel like you're floating. But I'm reminded of a story in the Bible that when the Bible says that Jesus touched the blind man, and the blind man didn't quite see clearly. He said he saw men as trees, but it was when Jesus touched him the second time that's when the blind man began to see. Now, this is what is so significant to me in that story. The blind man's eyes was not open to new things. His eyes was open to things that always existed, but for the first time, he began to see. My first touch was when I lost my first son. I wasn't quite there, but it was something about encountering this past experience, this past March, well, all of a sudden, it's, 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 it's really hard to explain. Because I have such, I was telling David just yesterday, I am the happiest I have ever been in my life, and it makes no sense whatsoever. Now, do I believe, well, the reason why I'm this happy, well, I had to lose my son. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that for one second. But I can say, in spite of the experiences that I have encountered, somehow God has and is making himself very real to me, and I can't explain it. Other than just to be able to try to describe it to you, it's like, listen, this whole idea that God is the peace that surpasseth all understanding. I understand that today in a way that I never thought that I would. But be encouraged. If nothing else today, that's what I want to say to you. That's what I like to extend to you. In spite of whatever, be encouraged. When the 
sister came to Jesus and said, had you been here, my brother would still be alive. Jesus, on the other hand, introduced to her a total different perspective. You have the same story. You have a dead brother that's in a tomb. You have the same story, but two different perspectives. One said that he's dead. Jesus said he's not dead. And I think that is very symbolic of the fact that, again, regardless to the things that we may encounter in our lives, God can always give you that touch that will enable you to see things in such a way, it's like, whoa, how is it that I feel happy? How is it that I feel there's such a peace that I have? And it's not because I paid my tithe. It's not because I showed up at church. It's not because I shared the message of Christ. It's because I was devastated. It's because of everything that a Christian should do, I was checked out. I didn't want to hear no one talk about nothing. No, don't talk to me about God. I, I don't want to hear it. Just, just hush. I don't want to hear it. And through all of my bitterness, through all of my how negative I was and some of the things that I said to God, I, I, I think back on it now, it's like, man, you really do love your people. So let's not get lost as, as, as Pastor Dave and, and, and Becky proclaims the truth to you all. Let's not get so locked into this idea of getting on this religious treadmill of performance because I'm telling you, I almost feel like Paul. I was one of the cheapest of them all. When you have people like Kenneth Copeland and, 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 and Oral Roberts and Jimmy Swaggart and all these guys back in the day calling, hey man, can you be here at this uh, conference and, and render the music for us? I was around some of the most profound people that's considered to be in the Christian world and this happened to me. I was so angry with God, man, this doesn't make any sense. How in the world, not once, twice, but through my anger, through my confusion, God somehow just weaseled his way right through. And again, today I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, even though I cannot explain it or articulate it or have the vernacular to give it to you what I do know is this that God is you may be here today I think about my little nephew there Dave, uh, Dagan Dagan's going through a tough time right now some of the top doctors across this country can't figure out what's going on with them. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like when you're at this place of, of you just don't know what to do. We was talking about that yesterday, David and Becky and I. You just, sometimes you, you just don't, you don't know how to feel. It's not that you don't respect God, it's not that you don't love God, but it's just like, God, I, don't, I, I just don't want to talk to you right now because I just don't, I don't know where I am. I don't understand why I'm encountering these things that I'm encountering. So if you really are there and if you really do love me the way that you say you do, and if you really do love me the way that my parents taught me and according to the Bible, all this stuff and what everybody has said, if it's true, you have to meet me right where I am. And all I can tell you is this. This Jesus, this God that we read about in these Bibles, our devices, 
that God came off of those pages. And again, I don't fully understand it all. But what I can tell you again is this. God is always there with us. Even in my days of depression, anxiety, I understand that I'm depressed, but I'm depressed with him carrying me. When I'm having a not so great day, a day where I just need to peel away from everything and everybody, and I'm just feeling this, this, this massive ball of all kinds of emotion. I'm having that experience with God carrying me. Thus the importance of the message of the grace of God. Unmerited. It's not something that you deserve. It's not contingent upon your grip on God. It's God's grip on us. Let that be the good news of the gospel. Any other gospel that is a, there, there, there's a contingency plan based on what it is that you have to do. You got to make sure you cross the T's, make sure you dot the I's. Any gospel that presents itself when if you do this, then God will do that. I wouldn't ingest that. But the gospel that says that yet while you were sinners, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. How do we get to experience that love? We get to experience that love of God when you go through those moments where I just don't know what's going on. In the midst, in the, in the abyss of your confusion and your heartache and that broke up marriage, the loss of a, a loved one, in those moments, man, God has a secret. And his secret is, I know it hurts. I know you're angry. But there is no anger or no hurt that will cause me to turn my back on you. There was a gentleman that wrote a book a few years ago, and it felt good, sounded good, very religious, and had all a little twist and turn to it, called God Chasers. And it hit me one day like a ton of bricks as I encountered the experiences that I've gone through if you really believe that I'm there, then why are you chasing me? How can you be chasing me? And I have clearly stated that I am your present help in the time of need. Giving up for us is not an option. And the reason why it's not an option, it's because if, if it's based on what we're able to do, then it's a game changer. But it's not an option because God never gives up on us. If you feel like that you need to let go, man, I just give up. Hey, go for it. Go for it. You know why? Because God doesn't, he doesn't give up on you. God understands where we enter into as far as these dark places and in the, 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 the lanes of life. God understands these things. He really does. And I just want to remind you, I just want to encourage you as people that Christ has died for. Once again, in spite of your life's experiences, in spite of how confusing, in spite of whatever it may be, just know that God has not forsaken you. God is still here and he has always been here and always will be right there with you even in the darkest of hours. Even in those moments where, man, God, where are you at? God's right there with us. Yeah. And God can handle our truth. When we find ourselves trying to, well, let's, I can't say that because that's not very Christian. Let me tell you something. The God that I have encountered is a God that understands. It says that he's, he's touched by the feelings of our infirmities. God's a big boy. I don't mean no disrespect. God can handle your truth. 
And not only can God handle your truth, God can handle your secret. Oh, God knows our secrets, man. He knows where we really are. He knows that we can participate in ministry. He knows that we can shake the pastor's hand and, and yet all this other stuff is going on in our lives. But that is the beauty of the grace of God. Because yet while you are in the process of your evolution, the process of evolving and becoming from glory to glory, God knows the areas of your life that needs to be pruned away. So be encouraged. Don't you sit here. Don't you leave here and feel like there's not another chance for you. God is not a God of a second chance. God is a God of a multiplicity of chances. And if he can spare me, dear God, if he can spare me with the crazy stuff that I was saying to him, you're not so far away. As a, as a matter of fact, he's just right there with you. Let's pray. Father, sometimes it's hard to even put words together. Because you are literally, you're undefinable. Even your word says that you are unsearchable. But you have made us in your likeness. And that in which you have placed in us, that your likeness causes us to respond to you even though we may not understand it. And Father, there's some hurts. There's some scars. There's some bruises. There's some confusion. There's some anger that's here. Deep-seated unforgiveness. Father, we present these things to you right now. We don't tuck it away. We don't try to hide. We don't try to lie to ourselves. We present the gift of our ugliness to you because it's only you that can open our eyes so that we can see a different reality. I trust that you will give each person in here that is present and for those that are here that are praying for others that you know are struggling, I pray that you would even do it for them as well. Father, we love you. We trust you, though we don't fully understand, but we accept your love. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. I have some friends here that I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, it is so good to see you guys. I, I, I wasn't expecting them to come, but um, obviously, uh, David had put it on the internet, and, and man, what a, what a gift of friendship um, that these folks have, Joanne and her father. Um, that's 5 -oh over there. He gave me a little badge one day, um, and I told him I've been pulling people over, trying to make sure that they slow down and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But it, hey guys, listen, it, it is, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today, and I don't, David knows me well, I don't I don't trust a lot of people with my pain. I don't. But I felt compelled to share that with you guys today. And again, I, I just, I'm, I'm learning to move in the idea of a relationship with God without the necessity of having to understand everything that I'm encountering. Sometimes you just gotta go with it because there's just no, there's just no answer. But I'm so grateful to be here with you all, and I hope that I've said something um, to encourage you along the way and, and, and to remind you that God's love is not something that's just in a book. It's what's keeping our country. In the midst of all the chaos that's going on in our country right now, God's keeping us. And I believe that God has intervened, and I believe that God is intervening in Washington, D.C. So listen, you guys be blessed. It's been great to be here and share with you all this morning. May God continue to bless us all. And may God continue to bless America. <laughs> bless you all. I think, 
I think that God wants to, he's not done. You know, this truth is brought up that, that God, he can handle. He, he's a big boy. And that you can give him whatever it is you're bearing. Whatever it is that's keeping you kind of out of play with God. You can trust him with that ugly secret because it's not a secret to him. Isn't it awesome to know that that thing that you know about yourself that nobody else knows, that God knows it, and in spite of that, he still loves you? That's why he's the Savior, man. And he's ready to save, and he's ready to intervene. You know, and if you have a need this morning, we want to we wanna minister to that need. We want to pray for you. I'm just going to ask just for a minute. If you've never come to a place in your spiritual life where you have said, God, in all the stuff that I don't understand about you, I'm by faith going to lay claim to the fact that you understand me. And I'm going to trust you with the only thing I have, the only thing I possess, and that's my life, and that's my heart. God, I just say, here I am. In fact, man, if you can do it with him, you can do it with me. I ask you one more time, just to, in honor of the Lord Jesus, just humble ourselves and bow our heads again. And if you're here today, and you say, man, I don't know that I have that kind of relationship, that I, I've invited Jesus because he is a gentleman, guys. He only comes upon invitation. And if you would say, God, I want to invite you to come and take up residence in my life. And you've never done that. If you've never done that today, would you by faith just say, hey, I'm going to raise my hand. Say, I've never invited personally, intimately invited Jesus Christ to come and be my Lord and my Savior and sit upon the throne of my heart. Would you just by faith, would you raise your hand and say, Preacher, that's me, and I need you to pray for me. God bless you. Keep them up for just a minute. Anybody else? Say, God, I've never just invited you to come and just invade my life and just take over. Hallelujah. You know, that's the first step. The next step is to say, God, I'm ready. Tired of running. Because listen, we've all been there, guys. We've all had our hands raised. And right there where you sit, right there where you are, you can just say, Lord Jesus. I want everybody, because you guys have prayed it before, and these some folks have never asked. And there's nothing wrong with that. Say, God, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. Come on. The Bible says you've got to confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. God gave you a mouth so you could testify, so you could ask, so that you could invite him. And say, I want to ask you, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I believe you got on that cross for me. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've fallen short. But your word says that you're a friend of sinners. So if you're my friend, I'm inviting you to come live in my life. Come sit on the throne of my heart. I give you the only thing I have, and that's my life. And you said, God, if I asked, that I would receive and I receive salvation I receive your love I receive your finished work I receive your Holy Spirit and I'm your son and daughter by your blood by the power of your resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus Amen
Now, I want to tell you that was hard, wasn't it? But my Bible tells me, to anyone who has done that, he has given you the right to become sons and daughters of God. You see, Jesus is coming. You know the only thing that's keeping him at bay? Because there's a lot of people that aren't ready to meet him. And he cares for you. He cares for your pain. And the Bible says that if you've done that, you believe that, that you are born again. Not of the flesh, but you're born of the Spirit. An heir and a joint heir in Christ Jesus, an eternal being. And I want to tell you what, your life has just begun. Your relationship with God has just begun. God has always been there. It's been one dimensional. He's always loved you. But only until by faith you say, God, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Only then does it come an intimate relationship to where he loves you and you get to love him back. You get to have dialogue with God. So I want to tell you right now, whether you're sitting here or whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, it doesn't matter. God loves you. And if you pray that prayer, listen, the Bible says that you're born again. And the next step is what we're fixing to do. Is we're going to baptize some folk. Amen. And you know what baptism is? Baptism is just me telling everybody, yeah, I'm the Lord's. I'm not ashamed. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. I'm one of them weak people that need to lean on God. <laughs> I don't possess strength in myself. I don't have anything good in myself. I'm trusting in the one who was so good that he loved a sinner like me. That he's forgiven me, my Bible says, that my sin and lawless deeds, he has cast as far as the east is from the west in the depths of the sea. And the Bible says that God says, of your sin, because of what you've just said, believing upon the cross, that your sin and lawless deed, he remembers no more. Now here you go. If God's saying, of your sin and lawless deeds, I remember no more, then don't bring him up to God. You know what you do? Well, what happens when I sin? You come to God and thank him that Jesus has paid for that too. It'll change your life, amen? Quit living under the weight of what Casey said, of this performance, this give and take relationship. No, God gave, and that's all that needs, that's all you need to know. If you're here today, or you, if you're here today to be, get, be baptized, would you go ahead and follow Miss Becky? If there's, we have, I think we have some ladies here today, amen. Miss Becky, would you assist them? If we have any men, I don't think we do at this point. And listen, if you receive Jesus Christ today, please don't, don't leave without us getting your information because we want to follow up with you, Miss Kelly. Would you make sure, raise your hand, Miss Kelly. All right. Miss Kelly's going to help you. And I want you to please uh, to see her. Miss Kelly, would you come here on this front row? And I'm going to ask you, if you prayed to receive Jesus Christ today, that you'll just make your way up here to this front row while we sing. And she's going to get your information. Because, listen, it's just begun. You can't make it by yourself. Amen? If you've done that, then I'm going to ask you to come and talk to my wife and talk to Miss Kelly and let's get you filled out. Please, God bless Y'all give him a hand. Amen? You pray to receive Jesus Christ? Come on, man. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, man. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you say sometimes, Lord, why? 
is this happening to my life? Because God says, I want to take it and I want to use it for my glory. Because you've got story that some people that no preacher's going to be able to preach. <laughs> it's yours. You know, I heard, I said when we get to heaven, I said God is not going to come and examine us for all our medals and our accolades. He's going to come and examine us and he's going to feel our scars. He's going to feel those wounds. You're going to see those pains. Because those are our identifiers. Those tell us who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just give the Lord another hand. Amen. Now, now I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get ready to baptize some folk. Chico, where'd you go, man? Get some help here, dog. And uh, or maybe not. I don't know. Casey might have got something he wants to throw down. But I want, I want us to to bless my brother. Okay. You know why? Because I want him to come back. <laughs> Amen. Come on. I'm going to ask our deacons to come. Amen. And we're gonna we're gonna take an offering. If you've not done so already, if you don't have a check or cash, then you can. You can just write that out to Trinity Church, and then we're going to write him a single check. You can also use the kiosk back there to give. If you want to go on your phone right now, you can go to the website, and you can do it that way if you want to. But I want to bless him all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, and I want to send him off with a, with a real Palestine blessing. Amen? And so just please reach down and... and, and Let's bless him and send him off and so he'll come back real soon. Amen. Miss Becky? Huh? Yeah. I'll let you handle that. All right. Well, let's, uh, won't you ask the blessing on the offering? thousand stories in a day they think you're
see anybody. This is look at our beautiful new additions. <laughs> this is Miss Sandra and uh, Sandra Foster. And uh, Miss Sandra said that she accepted Christ as her personal Savior today, and uh, that God just answered a prayer for her, and uh, He just showed up in a mighty way. And when she walked in this this church building, so let's give her a hand clap. is Miss Brittany. Miss Brittany comes and she has accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior and Lord and wants to become a member of the church. Yes, member of the church. Okay. Oh, awesome. Let's give her a hand clap and welcome her and her beautiful family in. And this is Miss Sandra. Miss Sandra Shepherd. And she comes wanting to be a member of our church. We love her already. She's already a member, I think. So. <laughs> Bobby Kinesny, Kinesny, Brother Bobby Kinesny comes and has accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior and Lord today, and he wants to be part of our body, and so we're just going to say awesome, we welcome you in. And this is Miss Lois, and I know you guys are getting to know Miss Lois, we love her, and we just want to, she comes and uh, as a member, wanting to become a member of our church body, so let's just welcome her, love you. Let's give them all a final hand clap. And what we're going to do is, um, let's just, Brother Frank, would you close us in a word of prayer, and then the band's going to play, and then y'all just come up and just bless them and, and get to know them. Lord, we thank you that you love people, and you draw them to you. And Lord, we thank you for the, those that have come this morning and had the guts to stand up and say, yes. I want Jesus as my personal Savior. Lord, I thank you for them. And I thank you for drawing. And Lord, help us to be to them what they need on a human level, Lord, to love them and to, to nurture them, to, to be there for them. Lord, we just thank you for the message that you gave us this morning, Lord, that, that no matter what happens in our lives, you're there, whether we know it or not, whether we see you or don't see you, you're there. And Lord, just quicken our spiritual sight that we'll recognize that you're with us all the time. And Lord, we thank you that for just what you've done this morning, Lord, and we're so grateful, so thankful. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all tell somebody you love them, amen. Welcome on the way out. Y'all go on. I want you to come up and love on these people right here.
mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hey, people from